in the name of Jesus. Um, we call out every spirit tonight. Every spirit that is not like God, we call you out right now. And we command you to lose your hold right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now that your blood might will flow right now, Lord. Let it flow down to every heart tonight. Let it flow down to every mind tonight. Let that be all different tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. We appreciate you. As we continue to go forward, we pray that you will go ahead of us, Lord. We pray that you will pave the way. Do what no other power is capable of doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak right now. We come in the mighty name of Jesus with power. We come with the authority. Greater, 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 greater. Thank you for greater tonight, Lord. You said for us to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Give us a breakthrough in the midst of us being broken down. We pray that you will lift us up right now. Push us forward, God. Thrust us forward right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. Come on, come on, sing to the living God. For he alone is worthy of our praise. Come on, praise him like you really need it. Praise him like you really love him. Praise him like you know he's deserving of your praise. Come on, saints. Come on, sing. Rest on your feet. For the King of glory, praise God, is in the house. Our Lord, our Savior.
have an invocation through, amen, President Reynolds, followed by the Old Testament scripture by Evangelist Pearly Brown, and followed by uh, her, uh, the New Testament scripture, Evangelist Dora McKinney. This time, will you remain standing uh, through the prayer and the scriptures? before you once more again to give you thanks. And God, we thank you for this day. And God, we thank you for this hour. And God, we ask you to look down on us, God, as we go and endeavor to go into a service to be pleasing unto you, God. God, help us, God. Oh, God, that we may stand before you, God. Help us, God, that we will let our light shine before man. God, that we will have compassion upon one another. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we ask you to look down on our leader on tonight, God. We ask you to look down on each and every one here tonight, God. And God, we will praise you, God. We will wish you up and we will magnify you. And God, we will obey your word and your will, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray, God, that souls be saved on tonight, God. God, we pray, God, that you will deliver, God. You will set free, God. In the name of Jesus, have your way, God. Have your way, God. And we will praise you the more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Scripture, Exodus, second chapter, five through the tenth verse. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Yeah. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to be a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew and brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And she became, he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. The word of God for the people of God. On your hearing, Matthew 9, verses 33 through 36. But the Pharisees said, he casts out devils through the prince of the devil. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Word of God. Amen. 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 Tonight, amen, we are coming to down uh, to, uh, uh, towards the end of our aim convention. Amen. And the Lord has been blessing every night. Amen. And even throughout the day, amen, the Lord has been blessing. But tonight, amen, is our bishop to, uh, night tonight. And we give honor to our bishop tonight. Will y'all help us? Amen. Thank God for our bishop tonight. And we thank God for all of the administrative assistants and to the superintendents and everyone here tonight. Amen. But we come to have a good time tonight. How many of y'all come to have a good time? And I'm so glad it's not a requirement, amen, that the house be full, amen, that the Lord will show up in here tonight. But I declare, if you just get on one accord, 
Amen. The Bible said, when, there, when there's two or three gathered together in my name, he said, there will I be in the midst. And how many know uh, uh, when we give God praise, amen, God will show up in here. Amen. Just for a few of us, God will show up in this place. And I don't know about you all, but amen, I want God to show up because I need God to do something in my life. How many of y'all need God to do something in your life? Amen. You got to get radical for God. You got to learn how to give God a praise through good times, through bad times. You just got to learn how to give God some praise. Amen. And at this time, amen, the praise team is coming to uh, lead us further into praise and worship. And let us not sit on our seat. Amen. As they come. But let us get with the praise team as they come at this time. Amen. The praise team is coming.
Deacon Michael Zapp here, inviting you to continue to support and give praise to the New Way to Live Gospel Program. of hearing our bishop on tonight, amen, but tonight, amen, we'll get to the part, amen, where we want to be a blessing to our bishop, amen, and we are small in numbers tonight, amen, and we're going to ask some of y'all to come up a little bit, we kind of scattered, and amen, and we're sitting over there, and over here, and way back there, amen, let us come up a little bit, and amen, and, and get together, we're family, come on, tell your neighbor, we're family, amen. Amen. We learn how to give God praise, <clears throat> whether the place is full or whether we, amen, few in numbers. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be in the number. I'm glad to be in the number one more time. Somebody desired to be here and can't be here. Somebody in the nursing home this morning. Somebody in the hospital. Somebody, amen, that lost their life. They're not here on today, but thank God. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad I'm here today. Amen. amen. We're just glad to be in the house today. We're getting ready to be a blessing to our bishop on tonight. Amen. And we know that we have been given all week long, but we pray that we have reserved what we are supposed to do for our bishop on tonight. Amen. Y'all get quiet in here. I say amen. 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 Let us, amen, prepare, amen, to be a blessing to our bishop tonight and certainly uh, to our uh, superintendents and our administrative system. Amen. We want to do our very best. Amen. And we know what we're supposed to do and to our audience and to our presidents uh, of our aim. Uh, we know what we've been asked to give them tonight and to uh, their counterparts, we, we know what we've been asked to give, but to our audience, amen, everybody can, amen, can give at least $25 tonight, amen, and some, and you know if God has blessed you with more, you know that the Bible says too, too much is given, much is required, amen, and God don't, uh, he don't bless you, amen, to what necessary you give, but sometimes it's what we got left. You know you have a greater uh, capacity to give more. And when we have a greater capacity to give more, you don't need a title to give more. Come on in. Look how quiet y'all get now. Amen. But the Bible says, amen, the, uh, he blesses what kind of giver? And he said, if you so sparingly, you're what? Amen. But if you're so bountifully, amen, you're rebound. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking for something great and big and large from God. How many of y'all looking for something, amen, big from God? Amen. amen. But you can't so small and reap big. That's not how it works in the kingdom. Amen. But when we sow according to the way that we want God to bless us back, amen. And if you do that, you sow in faith. And I know that you don't have a whole lot to give, but amen, you sow that which God has given you. And the Bible says he gives seed to the what? Amen. And tonight, if you even desire to be a sower, I, I guarantee that God will give you, amen, something to sow. Amen. And don't just sit there tonight, even to our children tonight. Amen. We want to want you all to put something in those children's hands and, and teach them the principle of giving. 
Amen. It's not necessarily the amount with our children, but we want to be able to get, uh, uh, we want our children to learn how to sow from a young age. Amen. This is aim. This is the training ground. This is where we teach them, amen, about sowing and reaping. Amen. And let us, and let us uh, make sure that our children got something to give on tonight. And at this time, and at this time, if you get your offering in your hand, Amen. And we don't want to have to take all night tonight to do this because we're waiting to hear from our bishop on tonight. But if, amen, if you get your offering, we're going to receive, amen, from our pulpit tonight. Amen. With your offering in your hand, amen, we're going to ask you that you stand. And we're going to ask that if you would face as those in the middle of your face this way, and those here face that way, and you'll come around at the same time. Amen. You can come at this time. You, uh, our musician will give us a marching music that we will certainly appreciate.
another hundred and seventy-five dollars. You know, help us at least get a hundred and seventy-five dollars. Amen. This is our bishop for tonight. I hate to get this close. Thank you, God, give it. No matter how you try, the more you give, the more you get back to you. It may not come when you want it, but you always show up on time. Amen. So we need $38. Come on, I get just a few more people to give us. It is close, y'all. Stand. Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. Thank you for the great sacrifice that your people have given. God, we know that their desire to give may not have to give at this time. They've been given all week. And God, we thank you, God, and we ask God that you give it back to them. Give it back to quickly, God. Press down, shake it together, run it over. God, give it back into their business. Father, we thank you tonight. And we pray, God, that you be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, give yourself a hand. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to move forward. Amen. At this time, we're getting ready to hear from our youth. Uh, a youth moment. We're going to call up President uh, Larry Stevens is coming at this time to present our youth moment at this time. Come on, give our President Stevens a minute of the Again, we bless the Lord tonight for just another anchor venture. Amen. And we uh, give honor to God tonight. We give honor to Bishop Leggett, Brother Ingram, and to all of the wonderful man of God here sitting on the podium with him. We pray now that you will just accept this young man as he comes. His name is Javian Brookins. He's a member of the Zion Church of God in Christ and a member of the Tunnel District. His pastor is Rev. 
Dr. Edward Allen and our superintendent is Superintendent Austin. Superintendent Austin, who has been very supportive with this. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Javier Perkins. I am a member of the Zion Church of God in Christ. My pastor is Pastor Edward Allen, and I am a student at Georgia Military College. I am here before you to give you an inspirational message, the challenges of youth. It has been very hard, hard home this year, and in school, especially my English class, my grade was a 65, had seven zeros. My mom pulled me from sports. No TV. Instead of facing the challenges, I kept telling my mom, it's not me, it's the teacher. I turned, I turned most of my work. My mom said, okay, I'm going to talk to the teacher. I knew when my mom talked to the teacher, I was going to be off the hook. It was worse than I ever thought. The teacher told my mom more stories. I, I, tell, I tell you, facing challenges in my life may be difficult and tough, time, tough at times, but with God, you can have to see. You can succeed. We should stay in school because look at our world today. Our black people are in gangs, prison, or shooting their own race up. We believe we the people should get we the, we the people should get our education and go to college to be successful in life. We will make mistakes like failing grades, behavior issues, and fighting, but we can learn from our mistakes. We should take advantage of this freedom. But Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and others, we was we won't be here today. We can change the world. We can become successful. We can become something successful. We can be doctors or lawyers. We, the young black people, should stay in school and get degrees. We can achieve anything if we pray. We must learn to stay prayerful. Ask God for help and obey our parents. We think that our parents are hard on us because we can't do what we want to do. They, they do because they, they do these things because they love us and want us to know that God loves us whatever we do. And by the way, I passed my English class from a 60, I got from a 65 to a 79. Hello everybody, this is Johnny Newsom with Financial Solution and Associates and you're tuned into New Way to Live Network. Amen. Come on, let's give our youth a hand. Amen. Glory be to God. Wonderful. Amen. At this time we're going to have our observation. It's going to, uh, Amen. President Stevens is going to come back and give us our observation. Because the Lord kind of called me off guard here because someone else had been doing the observations. But nonetheless, you know, God is good and we praise him for all the things that he does. Now, on tomorrow, on tomorrow, all the activities will begin at 10 o'clock. All right. I saw one young lady go, yes. But anyway, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, uh, all of our young people should be here and in place and following the schedule that will be provided for you to be at whatever activity that will be going on. It starts here in the uh, main sanctuary and then we'll go from there. Amen? All right. Uh, I 
was hoping to have seen all of our youth workers, but that had not been the case. We will try again. We will try again and again until we can get to see them. Um, on tonight, of course, we have our bishop who will be delivering the message on tonight. Let's give God praise for that. We were hoping that the sanctuary would be packed out, but unfortunately, maybe it's the weather. I'm going to say it's the weather. I don't know, but they're not here tonight. But you know what? We're here. We're here. And we're going to praise the Lord together. Amen? We thank God for all that you've done, all that you've given during this AIM convention. And we love you and we praise you for it. And we give God the glory. Amen? So thank you again. And just remember, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, there was a mix-up this morning, but we're saying it loudly and clearly. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen. We're going to hear a song from, from our choir this time. Amen. They come in and they're going to render a selection. Come on, let's receive the choir as they come.
you brought us from. Brought us from a mighty long way. Amen. And at this time, we are getting ready to, amen, to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. And at this time, we are about to present our, our, our chairman of the AIM is coming to introduce our speaker of the hour. And after which, this choir is going to come back and run uh, some money, a selection. And after which, you're going to receive the speaker of the hour. If you would, amen, receive, amen, the chairman of, our, of this AIM convention at this time, amen, uh, Chairman Jane Fudge. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Put those hands together and give God some praise. Man. Come on. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands like you really mean it. Clap your hands and bless his name. Praise God. We thank God. Praise God. Certainly under the Lord. Praise the Lord. The house, the house has already been addressed. We're so grateful. Praise the Lord. For this night. Praise the Lord. That we get an opportunity to hear our leader. And what God has placed in his heart. To say to us. We the AIM family. We, the individuals that have been given a task to do, praise God. And we thank God for the opportunity to serve uh, this great church, praise God, and this jurisdiction, praise God. These things would not be possible, praise God, to come together as an AIM family had not been for the vision of our leader, praise God, to see the need and to invest in it in terms of identifying individuals that would serve uh, the purpose of ministry. And praise God, he has looked among us and he's organized us and put us together as a team, praise the Lord, to serve and to work and to love and to be compassionate. Praise God, that's because of his visionary leadership. We serve at the pleasure of our leader, a leader that loved God and loved people. Tonight, as he comes to speak to us, we want you to pray for him. He wants you to pray for him. That God's hands would rest on him. God's anointing would guide his tongue and his thought. And give him what to say. Give him how to say. Praise God as our choir will give us another sonic selection. After the choir, we would ask that you would rest on your feet and receive the present of Southern Georgia Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, none other than Bishop Dr. J. J. Wayne Leggett. Come on, put your hands together. Appreciate God for our leader. The choir is coming. Thank you. 
Yo, what up? This is DJ Chip, and you are watching New Way to Live Network. Thank you for your faithfulness and all you have done. Thank you for these are people who gathered here tonight. Now, Lord, it's preaching time. Speak to me, Lord. Speak, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost preach through these lips of clay. Bless us right now. Encourage your people. Give them a word, a word of assurance, a word to know that thou art with us. Strengthen our bodies and continue to keep us. We won't take in the glory, but all the glory shall be thine. In Jesus' name, amen. There's not a friend like the Lord, he Jesus. No. Thank God for being here tonight. Maybe 
receive it in the presence of the Lord. And I would like for the choir to come down and take this section. And uh, yeah, okay, this is what I was looking for. Our convocation is coming up. It's going to be August 15th through the 20th, and uh, we have flyers here uh, who have been preaching, and uh, we're excited about what God is doing. And uh, Sister Pam, you didn't put the theme on, on this flyer. I added something else to it, but uh, I'm charting a bus. On that Tuesday night, for the saints in Columbus, come because we cannot have convocation like this. Amen. And Pastor, the responsibility lies on your shoulder. And I'm putting X's by those persons who are not here. You got to be compassionate, but you got to be mean business for the Lord. If you not, wasn't going to be here, you should have let me know. And only one superintendent called me, and he said he was just too hot. And he worked so hard today, and he couldn't make it. And superintendent, I want you to take a list of the superintendents who are here. And there are people who are going to come. We cannot do business like this. We're too great a jurisdiction. Ames Committee uh, have not advertised like they should have done, and uh, but you receive a calendar at the first of the year, so you should have known that this convention was coming, and you're in it, and so you got the support, and you care for your pastor and your superintendent and your state, you ought to support. Amen. And uh, I became to a problem, and I was telling somebody about it. Um, the septic tank here went down, and uh, I was telling the person about it, and I said, "Well, we shouldn't have bought that temple." I said, "Well, we got it," and I said, uh, "And there ain't nothing we can do about it now, but pay for it." And I thank God for this temple. Amen. We don't have to look for a place to have a meeting. And you own this place, this place, along with the Southern Georgia Second. And I'm glad for it. Amen. And I'm going to do all I can to maintain it and, uh, and let the Lord take the rest. No need to talk about the people who used to be here. They got a big church up the street. Amen. Our million dollars that we paid for this place, they built that up the street. And the Lord has protected us in this endeavor. A couple of years ago, a few of the administrative assistants know that was a white gentleman who came here and I was coming every Wednesday. And I was sitting out there and he gave me an ultimatum about moving us out of this building. He said, just move out of the offices and we'll, we'll move everything, we'll repair everything in there. And I was talking to somebody, I said, no, sir, that won't be. Once they move in, you won't be able to get them out. So we better stay here while we're here. Praise the Lord. And, uh, this is jurisdictional night, and I heard Del Foote talk about the Ames family. And this is Ames family, and I'm so proud to be a part of this family, to be a part of this jurisdiction. The Lord has blessed me uh, to be here, and uh, this young man right here. Come here, young man. Yeah, I asked you, this one sit here. Yes, sir. I asked you if you got the Holy Ghost. You told me, yeah. 
You told me you got it today. Come in. You got the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. When you got it? Today. You got it today? What were you doing when you got it? In the car. You in the car? And the Holy Ghost fell on you in the car? What happened to you? Got it. You got like that song to uh, something about the Holy Ghost. I cannot explain, but I got it. Give him a hand, praise the Lord. You, you young people down there, do you all have the Holy Ghost? Huh? Oh, come in. Come in, come in, little lady. That you over there saying, yes, you got the Holy Ghost? And I want you to have it. It's available for you. When did you get it? Today. You got it today too? God is passing out the Holy Ghost today. Oh, amen. Praise God. Put your hand together and say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Isn't it wonderful for them to profess, profess to having the Holy Ghost? And we thank God for it. Come in, Marcus. You got the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. When did you get it? <laughs> you got it in the car? What was happening when you got it in the car? You were dancing? You, gonna, you feel like dancing tonight? You gonna dance some for me tonight? Well, we, we'll see when the Holy Ghost comes. Praise God. Praise the Lord! Praise God. And you know, when I was old, Little, that's how I was. That's why I started in the church. And Lord, bless. How? how? You, I'm, I'm trying to get you up there. Why? Come on up here. Come on up here. Don't be ashamed. You scared. You scared, are you? You scared of the Holy Ghost, are you? Okay. You got it? Yeah. When did you get it? Today. You got it today again. Huh? What was Lord? What was Lord? Was well, Lord is passing that out in the car? Praise God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Thank God. And I'm not going to be long before you tonight, but I want to give you what the Lord has given me. Huh? All right, y'all stop playing now. Listen to me. I want y'all to listen to me, okay? If you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to know how to act, okay? Praise the Lord. There is recorded in the word of the Lord, and the theme for this convention has been compassion. But when Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. Jesus was moved with compassion. And throughout his ministry, he was always a sympathetic, the sympathetic Christ. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. The sympathetic Christ. Yes. And there's a hymn in the uh, hymn book that says, Does Jesus Care? Uh, and you know, there are times when you're going through and you ask yourself, Does Jesus care? But I want to answer you that question tonight. Yes, he cares. He cares what you're going through with. Jesus cares. Lift your hands and say, Jesus cares. Jesus cares. He cares because he is moved with compassion. And the compassion that he is moved, he, he is touched with your grief. 
and he is so compassionate that every tear drop that falls from your eyes, he bottles up all your tears. Yes. He is so compassionate until every strand of hair on your head, he numbers every strand of hair. And he orders your footsteps. And he said, a good man's footsteps are ordered by God because he is a compassionate Christ, a sympathetic Christ. And here, Jesus was moved with compassion. And in the book of Luke, he was so compassionate unto his church that he pastored. He came through a crowd of people. And it's recorded in Luke that he asked, uh, he said, what are we going to do about lunch for these people? And, uh, and he said, 200 pennies worth is not enough for this crowd. But there is a little boy out there with a lunch. Uh, his mother perhaps fixed him a lunch to go to school. They didn't have free lunch programs like they have now. And uh, she made him a lunch. Uh, five bottles of loaves and, and the fish. But Jesus said, bring it to me. And he said, what are they, what is this lunch in this crowd of people? But Jesus said, bring it to me. And whatever your problems are tonight, Jesus is speaking to you. He said, give it to me. I can bear your burdens if you give it to me. If you bring it to me. Hallelujah. Come in this comfort where you languish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Bring it to me. I bear your burdens if you bring them to me. Hallelujah. If you bring them to me, I will turn your tears into joy. If you just bring it to me. Hallelujah. And he understands what you're going through. For he was the first ophthalmologist. He opened the eyes of the blind. Uh, he opened the eyes of the blind. And the blind man had a testimony. He said, whereas I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. He became the first hemologist. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his tongue. See, that was just a mud anointing in the hem of his garment as it would have been in his hand touch. Hallelujah. So Jesus, he became the first psychiatrist. He met the man who was sleeping in the graveyard, who made the, the slab his mattress, and the, uh, the, the uh, head uh, his pillow. But Jesus knew that something was wrong with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus uh, was sympathetic, and he, at the grave of Lazarus, he wept on his human side, but on his father's side. He rose with all power in his hand. He said, Lucia, come on, Lazarus. Hallelujah. He said, Lucia, and let him go. And he got up with all power. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad tonight. Compassionate is understanding. He was moved with compassion on them. And you know how many of us are moved with compassion? I can sit there and watch television and see those children hungry and drinking water that dog standing. And it does something to my heart. And I'll go to my wallet and pull my credit card out and charge. Uh, I, I have a will that I'm digging over in Africa yes. because I'm moved with compassion. Yes. And you know, God's going to get some of us. When he said, when I was hungry, 
you didn't even feed me. When I was naked, you didn't even clothe me. Hallelujah. And we're going to say, when were you naked? And when were you uh, outdoors? But we are to be compassionate toward one another. And there's another scripture in, recorded in St. Matthew chapter 18. And there were some children. That's why I love children. And I love them and I take time with them. Because somebody had to take up time with me. And they wanted to know who was the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And you may be asking yourself, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child. And called a little child in the midst of them and said, Very, very, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. We got to come as these little children. And you got to come as these little children. Well, being converted, being changed from that form that you are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You've been changed. The angels in heaven have changed your name. And the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And behold, all things are becoming new. We've got to have that childlike faith and that childlike uh, behavior. You know, I went to a, a meeting, uh, Mother Ingram, uh, and uh, when I got there, the district superintendent told me, said, Bishop, said, the district missionary cut off the air condition. Her husband pastored the church, and she had the air condition cut off, and it was so hot. And I said, my, where is her compassion? Where is her love for the people? It's just hot, and you just can't do that. And you shouldn't have a heart like that. We should have a heart of compassion. And that's your own spirit to be in leadership. Praise the Lord. But we should have a heart of compassion, of understanding. Then compassion is undefeated. And the Lord turned their captivity and they have compassion. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 3. Compassion is like faith brings victory. And it comes from whatever failures. And that's why the Lord is bidding us to give him our problems. Give him our failures. And he can do more with them than we can do. If we are to prayer and give the Lord whatever problems we may have, he will turn them into joy. The other Sunday, I took in 10 young men at Bethany Temple, and they're candidates for the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Sunday morning, we're going to put them down on their knees like we used to do old-fashioned. I know you all don't believe in that, and but, but I believe in it. And it doesn't do the thing for the Holy Ghost, but it does something for you. It'll humble you down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They won't get it in the car, but they're going to get it on their knees. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But how compassionate are you? Ask yourself that question. How compassionate are you? And uh, we've got to be compassionate and have that love for one another. And that love and compassion got to be exemplified. You know, when you have somebody sick, you got to uh, see about them, send them a card, and uh, they're bereaved. You, they need to know that you care. And you know, sympathy will kill you, but empathy, putting yourself in that person's place. Hallelujah and putting yourself in that person's place. And in ministry, uh, you have to be compassionate. You know, as a leader, and as a leader of this jurisdiction, I've exemplified compassion. And I've had compassion. And you know, 
that a lot of people get mad with me and say, why don't you do this? And so why don't you take them down? Why don't you do that? I said, let the Lord work on them. Give them a little some, some more time. I said, you look and say, but how, how long is it going to take? But you have to be compassionate and compassion with people. Because be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You have to be compassionate to your sisters and brothers. And uh, be compassionate. Jesus was true in his compassion. He never failed. And he wasn't selfish. And there are a lot of people have selfish resentment and ill feelings toward others. But we must be pure in our motive. Raise your hand and say, Lord, search my heart. We've got to be pure in our motives. You know, and I hear, heard somebody saying, they expect for you to do whatever they do. Well, sometimes people are not uh, capable of doing it. And so you got to do right if they don't do right. I remember a preacher came to me uh, about a year or so ago and said, I need a thousand dollars. I carried him in the bank and signed the note. And there was a girl who was working there. And she said, Bishop, uh, uh, that man ain't gonna pay you back. <laughs> she was not a, a prophet, uh, a confessing prophet, but she sure told the truth. He paid me no mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, let me tell you something. But I had compassion on him because he said he needed it. And if you have something and somebody needs it, uh, you get bit a lot of times in church trying to grow your church. I paid uh, utility bills and mortgages for people trying to get them in the church, trying to keep them in the church. And you you know one thing, you cannot buy for them. They got to be dedicated to God. They got to love God. And if they love God, they gonna do what's right. And, but are there, there are people in need tonight. And all, there are those who have money and will not share with those. Who in need. But if you have the compassion of a saint of God, you have the compassion, the hymn said, how to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer that Jesus gave the key. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men to me. Hallelujah. You need to lift him up. Lift him up high. Lift him up high. Lift him up. Lift him up so the world can see. Lift him up. Lift him up. Come on, I said, lift him up. Hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw me under me. Yes. You got to lift him up. Now look at the masses people. We're suffering. And Orlando is a evident. And I was told that at the Church of God in Christ Women's Convention that there were men walking around there with women hats on. And uh, I don't know what I would have done had I seen it, but uh, but that's the kind of time in which we're living. And somebody told me they saw a man in the coffee shop with a dress on. So that those times we we're living in. So uh, we had better be compassionate toward them, try to get them saved. Try to get them saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Filled with the power of God. 
We got to be compassionate about soul winning. We got to be compassionate and try to get them saved. And let me tell you tonight, saints, you may need a friend. But the hymn said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All I see and grieve the bad. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, Take Lift your hands. I 
he is touched. What you're going through with. And he shares. He is touched. You're not going through alone. He is a compassionate Christ. He understands. Lift your hand and tell the Lord. Help me, Lord.
Hello, my name is Juan Lane, and thank you for tuning in to this station, New Way to Live. Listen, we can't do it without your help. We need you to send your donations in today. This is how this station operates, and we're trying to do the very best for you and your family with the production that we have. We are really giving it our all, but we cannot continue it without your financial support. So please, send your offerings in to P.O. Box 3615. Columbus, Georgia, 363193, in, in care of, of New Way to Live. And we'll make sure that we get it on so we can keep this great program going. If you and your family are enjoying it, we pray that you continue to, we pray that you send us an a, a offering that we can continue and, and do the very best for you. Um, also, make sure that you watch our uh, public education program. This is a very special program. Where it can help you prepare for your next test, the public education program, right here on New Way to Live. Thank you. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well. We have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.